All right, guys, let's do this. What up? It's JoJo on the radio. This is the iHeartRadio countdown. Lizzie McAlpine saying, Lizzie, so good to meet you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Awesome. Do, do you find it strange that the first, like, 10 seconds you walk in, like, you walk in the room, we'd never met, and I said, what's your favorite scary movie? No. Okay. And you said you don't watch scary movies. <laughs> I don't, though. no. But, what is, but you read them. You read the I novels. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I've been told that, like, reading, you know, because I don't, I don't read, apparently, <laughs> but uh, it's like, it, you know, your mind can really play tricks on you because mm-hmm. it's, it's more theatrical in your brain. Yeah. So in, in with that argument, if that's accurate, are scary novels scarier than the movies? Sometimes, but I don't like jump scares. So there are no jump scares in books. What horror, what horror book are you reading yesterday? <laughs> what horror book do you like? That you said The Shining, right? The Shining, I love all Stephen King, like The Stand. Dude, my wife, she has the full-on Stephen King. You guys would get along nice. for sure. <laughs> well, uh, Lizzie, you're from Philly. I am. But you live here now. Yes, I do. What made you What made you make the move? And did your family like clown you like, oh, you're going Hollywood and <laughs> all that fun stuff? No, no. They were very supportive. Um, I kind of just, I mean, I, I was at school and I dropped out and um, it kind of just made sense to be here. Everything is here, at least right now. Yeah. How long have you been in LA? Just over a year, I think. Year what and a half. What do you think? I like it. I didn't like it at first, but now I like it. <laughs> now what, Philly, like I, I lived in Philly for like four months. I know it mm. sounds crazy to be somewhere for four months, but- Philly, what's the, you know, sell me on Philly, aside from cheesesteak. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I don't know. I lived in, like, the suburbs outside of the city. I had a haunted experience once in King of Prussia. Really? Yeah. The mall? No, not the, not, not the mall. <laughs> I, it was a big mall in King of yeah. Prussia. Uh, but I lived in, in that same city yeah, yeah. and had these crazy doors slam on me in this place that we lived that oh. was rumored to have its all. It's uh, so me and, me and Philly, or King of Prussia, we, we kind of have a history there. Uh, Lizzie, you released uh, your second album, which we'll get to all the other stuff you're working mm-hmm. on in a minute. Your second album came out April uh, last year, 22. Yes. Five Seconds Flat. For people who don't know, which that's where Ceilings is from, mm-hmm. what do people need to know about this, this body of work? Oh, my gosh. Loaded question, I know. Um, it's basically just about uh, heartbreak and how we deal with that, and also even after heartbreak wanting love again uh true stories all true stories. yeah yeah all true stories um i find it very difficult to write about things that haven't actually happened to me so do you alert the person that it's about <laughs> no no names required but no the, i mean not usually because i tell you it's it's a do you agree with this or not if you're dating someone that's a singer songwriter this would fall on the other person more mm-hmm. so than you in this case it's assumed risk if if you do if, if yeah, great yeah. things happen you're going to end up probably in a song if bad things happen, you're going to end up in the song. Yes. It's, and you don't have to, that's just assumed risk, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Last song to make the album. What was the very last one that almost didn't make it? Uh, the last song I wrote for the album was Nobody Likes a Secret, which is kind of like a shorter interlude track. Um, and then Orange Show Speedway was very, very late in the game, too. It almost didn't make it. I always find some of those, I hear these stories all the time, like the, the one that almost didn't make it, that kind of thing, mm-hmm. turns out to be something like really special. Yeah. Have, have you had that experience at all or no? Yeah, I mean, I think I think I, I love all the songs that we like added at the very end. Um, I think, I, especially nobody likes a secret. That's like one of my favorite songs on the album, even though it's like very short and kind of like a deep cut. Um, I, I think it's really special. Lizzie, uh, five seconds flat was your second album. Mm-hmm. I'm told. I guess it's kind of a true or false question. You're already done writing the third album and then uh, working on the fourth album. Yes. What the heck, dude? <laughs> Give me can I, walk me through <laughs> through this. I, I just write all the time. I just constantly am writing. Um, yeah, I, ha- I had these songs for the third album written for like over a year at this point. Wow. And so now we're like in the process of producing those and simultaneously I'm also writing more for the fourth album. I'm just, I just always write. So you're like, everywhere you go, you're looking for content or inspiration basically. <laughs> I'm not, I th- I'm not looking for it. It just, it, ha- it just finds me. I just write when the inspiration hits. And do okay on the. Have you recorded some of the tracks or most of those tracks, or just in the writing phases? Just in the writing phases for the for the fourth album. Now, could you? Ch- I mean, I guess well, clearly you could. If like <laughs> you could, you have this album written for the thir- third album. Mm-hmm. You could adjust before it comes out, obviously. Or yeah. do you have it set in stone? Like this is the third album. Um, some of the tracks might change and switch around, but for the most part, it, I know exactly like what I want it to sound like and concept wise and. All of that so wow and where do, do, uh, do you write like in your phone or do you have a notebook you like you... yeah i write my my notes some people like i've i've talked to so many different people and i'm not sure where i would fall on this not that it matters but uh some people like to write stuff down like pen yeah, and paper that just takes too long for me and then you lose the book and you're like, <laughs> of course, i guess you could lose your phone but then again right. there's thank god for the cloud okay i'm over yeah. overthinking <laughs> lizzie what is the weirdest place i mean your fans are beautiful amazing people 
But every now and then somebody does, like, they ask for a selfie in the most awkward spot. Oh, my God. Uh, imaginable. I was on a hike in Hawaii up a, a very <laughs> steep mountain, and I do not hike. I am not, I don't walk really ever. I don't like working out. Like, I am not, I don't, I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> and I'm, like, h- halfway up the hill, I'm breathing really hard. My face is really red. I'm sweating. <laughs> and this girl runs up the hill behind me and is like, hi, like, are you Lizzie? And I was like, yes. And she was like, can I get a picture? I was like, sure. I don't know what the picture looks like. I don't want to know, but that was the craziest place. Oh, my God. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> good yeah. God. But uh, she was not. That's nice for you to take it, though, you know? I mean, of course. All right, she Liz- ran all the way up the hill. That's true. Wait, uh, so, uh, by the way, you never walk. Cause I don't, I'm the same with you. Like, people do Runyon Canyon here in L.A., you know, and all this no, stuff. No, no, no. And I just, I mean, I'm like, dude, t- there's that, I have a car for a reason. Let's just get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You did a headline tour 2022, a couple mm-hmm. of festivals coming up, and uh, your second headline tour in 23. Yep. Uh, you must enjoy Do you enjoy road life? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so you you love the stage, right? Um, <laughs> you don't love the stage. I don't. Touring is very draining for me emotionally. Um, I'm very sensitive, and I get overstimulated so easily. And I feel like going on stage and performing such vulnerable and intimate songs for like a crowd full of people it's just it takes a lot out of me so oh, oh, i've never heard this it's answer very draining yeah so it, so you do it because you want to you want to share this moment with fans yeah i guess yeah, yeah but yeah. there's something i've never heard that i've I've, <laughs> I've interviewed everybody lizzie i've never heard that so what makes you want to continue doing it well i, I mean i want to it the there are parts of it that i like it's not that i don't i not like all of it i love like now we're on this next tour we're kind of like leveling up and we're adding set design and lighting and that's exciting because it's like more theatrical it's like a theater piece and right. a theater kid so i love like the, the theatrics of it all um and i do i love like hearing the fans sing along and like seeing their reactions to my songs and ha- like them having their li- own little moments in the crowd like i love seeing that stuff um so obviously i want to do it it just takes a lot out it of just you. takes a lot out of me so i have to be very careful with how much i i like give out that's such know. a it's heartfelt just... answer and such a <laughs> such a i don't know i really can feel where you're coming from because you're yeah. sharing something that you wrote in you know your bedroom your basement you mm. well, sure have a basement or not but you know uh i don't think of yeah i don't know if i haven't know anybody with a basement currently anyway but it's it's like a moment that you it's so personal but yeah. the rush of seeing somebody you've never met in your life mm-hmm. these complete strangers when you really think about it yeah. um recite all your lyrics back to you that's got to really be a special. feeling it's really special yeah I, I if i look too intensely at anyone in the crowd during my shows i will start to cry Whoa. so I, I can't really like make eye contact with anyone because i'll just start to cry i'm so sensitive that's why you're a good writer though right i mean i, I guess yeah <laughs> lizzie uh I, I read this statement i'm not sure i don't know what this means i kind of i think i know what it means you used ceilings the video to mm-hmm. soft launch your boyfriend Hard, hard launch. Hard launch. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what what does that does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, a, a soft launch is like posting. That's what I did on Instagram before the video came out. It's right. kind of like you know posting the back of their head or like their hand or like something. Teasing, you know, like teasing, like I've got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And then the hard launch is like just showing their whole face. <laughs> oh man, and so, and so the reaction when you, I mean, obviously the video is what it is, and fans just mm-hmm. love the music and the. But from that side of it, yeah. What was the reaction to, you know, this is my boyfriend, your family, all that good stuff? It was, I mean, my family already knew, but. Well, that's true, yeah. <laughs> but it's basically just for my fans. I, it was really fun. They were all like, they loved it. They were, they were eating it up. Now, does your boyfriend understand the, the rules of dating a singer-songwriter? <laughs> yes. If he does something good, he's in a song. Yep. Something bad, in a song. Yep. This, yeah. Yeah, there yep. you go. Lizzie Ceilings. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, this is not your first track, obviously, but this is, this, it's a moment for sure. Yeah. I mean, just everything just went crazy Mm -hmm. um talk about ceilings what 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 do people need to know um what do people need to know i don't know i mean i wrote the song after i just ended a relationship and then i went to london for three months i was like i need to i need to get out of here and um i was i wrote the song while i was there and it was kind of just about i was just reflecting on that relationship and then at the end remembering that like i was the one who ended it and it's actually like not real anymore and it was just a it was a moment i was definitely in my in my feels is this one of those songs that when you sing when you sing it live and if somebody if you make eye contact with someone you know repeating the lyrics is this one of those songs that like you guys both of you fan and yeah. you start kind of like it's 
You start crying, basically. It hasn't been, but maybe on this next tour, it, it probably will be on this next tour. Is London a ha- kind of a happy place you go to to, you know, let loose and write? Um, no. <laughs> well, okay, I'll scratch that off, Lizzie. <laughs> <No. McCall Pie. laughs> I do love London, though. I don't know why I throw that in there. Me too. Two-part question. Mm-hmm. What do you consider your best live performance ever? I mean, mm. everything was just, just about perfect. Then the complete flip of that, what do you consider your worst? I mean, everything just went straight to hell. Yeah. Um, best was probably on my first headline tour last year um, in New York. I don't remember what venue it was. Um, but that New York show was just so fun. The energy was incredible. The crowd was crazy. It was. Just, I just felt like really good about my performance. And, it, and I like, had a lot of fun on stage. Is it true when you have a great performance like that, it's almost spiritual or out of body like you kind of forget yeah. things it's so kind of just a i don't know you you're kind of transported in a yeah, way yeah definitely um and then the worst performance i don't know if it's the worst but a lot of things were going wrong um we played in amsterdam um on this last tour and just so everything was going wrong. i was like tripping oh, over God. chords like someone in the audience passed out oh. like in the, uh, it was crazy. It was just like so many things. But honestly, like, except for the passing out, obviously, that sucks every time. But, uh, um, except for that, like, it kind of made it more fun. Like, I don't know. It was, it was just like out of the norm. It was like not the same routine that we've been doing every night because we play the same set list every night. And you know, it gets it's it's not boring, but it, it's kind of tedious to just like sing the same songs over right. and over again for me at least. Um, but it was, it kind of like took us out of the, the normal routine and it was, I don't know, it was, it was chaotic, but it was fun. Kind of cool in a weird, not cool kind of way. Oh, yeah. uh, question about ceilings. When, uh, when this track, when it went viral, it just kind of, you know, I read that you were watching it go viral in real time, mm-hmm. so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, I've talked to so many people where they've done these, like they post something on TikTok, go to bed mm-hmm. and wake up and the world's different. Is, was it a similar experience or what was? I don't think so. I think it was more of like a gradual thing i would just like open tiktok and i would see like a couple videos with the song and then the next day would be a couple more and then the next day there was like a sped up version and then it just like kept going and going it wasn't it definitely wasn't an overnight thing i think it just kind of appeared when did you know that this one was uh doing something kind of extra special was there a, i like mean a- when the sped up version was was <laughs> taking off i was like whoa and all of these like influencers and people on tiktok that i that I had followed and like am fans of were, were making videos with the song. I was like, Oh my God, like this is actually like people are caring about the song. Like that's crazy. Do you know who the, who the person was that did, that did the sped up, the, the sped up version, like the remix? Of I that? do not know. But shout out. Whoever that is. Shout yeah. out to you. What the heck? man? <laughs> uh, you don't know this about me, but I am obsessed with the paranormal hmm. ghost UFOs, everything in between. I've got a podcast called paranormalish. I am a psycho. Yeah. Clearly. Have you ever had uh, anything that you'd consider a paranormal encounter? Yes, I have. Oh, God. What do you got? I have seen two ghosts. Um, one time, the the more, like, you know, the better story is uh, I was in a hotel room in Cape May in, like, 2016, probably. And I woke up in the middle of the night. There was a mirror, like, in front of my bed. And there was a woman, and she was standing in the mirror. She wasn't in the room. She was just in the mirror. And, and um, she was, like, she had long brown hair. She was wearing a long white nightgown and she was just staring out the window. What the? And I thought it was like maybe, maybe it was like sunrise and there was like light coming in. It was like, but it was completely dark outside and she was just this glowing white figure in the mirror. And I was so scared to move because I, I was afraid that she was going to like turn around and look at me <laughs> that I just like, I just couldn't move. I didn't say anything. I was going to wake up my sister who was in the next bed, but I didn't because I couldn't move. I was so scared. And then she eventually just kind of faded away. And you you were staring at her the, at her the whole time, like yes. until she. Yeah. Did you do any? What, uh, don't say that. Well, I don't. Do you do you recall the hotel? No, I don't remember the name of it. If I did, I would totally be doing research. Okay, and trying if, to figure if it out. Somebody like who would know that? Like is, I don't know. Were you on tour at the time? Was no, it was in twenty six. I was sixteen. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> just God. Like on a family vacation. <laughs> if it ever hits you, or if if anybody remembers. Yeah. Let me know, I and I'll, we'll do research. Great. We'll, oh, my God. That must have. It was crazy. What? And then the craziest part is that the next morning, I swear, I would swear on my life that this wasn't there the day before, but the next morning, um, there was, a like, a stain on the carpet in the spot where she would have been standing, and it was, like, dark brown, and I was like, 
there's no, I like it, it literally wasn't there the day before. I swear to God, like I swear on my life. I bet you're not the only person to see that lady in that room. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got to. This is where once again? In Cape May. Cape Cape May. It's in like New Jersey. I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to at least just take a random shot and see if. if, Does anybody know what she's talking about? (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, Do you have a crazy road story? You seem like an artist that would have one. And I'll tell you why. Because, well, do you know the the group One Republic? I do, yes. Ryan Tedder and the guys. Mm -hmm. They see, you know, they. You wouldn't expect it. But they have the wildest road stories. They've left really? band members in other countries. Oh my gosh! The tour bus, you know, breaks down. Wow. Septic tank blows up on a tour bus. Oh my god! Awful things, <laughs> hilarious things. Um, I think you are. I think you fit this. You you've had you've done enough touring. You know, headline tour. You know, all that good stuff. There's nothing like that interesting. Our our tour bus kind of like broke down at one point, but it was still like you could still drive it. It was just like we had no power. So we couldn't like charge any of our things and there was no light at one point. Like we just got back on the bus after a show and we were just like in darkness. It was kind of, but honestly, it was kind of like summer camp. We just kind of all sat in the front lounge and just like talked. Now, the bus could, it could drive. Yeah, it, just, it could drive. You know, there was just no power. So we sat in the dark, just kind of Yeah, out. the fridge kept beeping. <laughs> it was really annoying. A buddy of mine, AJ from Backstreet Boys, they they mm-hmm. tour. They had the different buses and whatnot, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, he got the brand new bus. He was like, "Oh my god, this yeah. is ours." Was brand new too. Well, his brand new bus broke too. His his freezer oh. or fr- refri- refri- refrigerator yeah. refrigerator. How do you say the word? Um, totally blinked down on him as well. Dang. So it's not always the new fancy bus, I guess. I know because then we got an old bus and it was great. <laughs> right, Lizzie, you loved. You mentioned this earlier. You loved uh, musical theater to the point where you almost became an actor mm-hmm. uh, and just didn't even pursue music. Is that true? Yes, or what's what's that is true? I um <clears throat> applied for all acting colleges like when I was applying to college and then last minute I applied to Berkeley College of Music in Boston um and before I even auditioned at any of the acting schools I got into Berkeley and I was like okay wow <laughs> I mean it's a phenomenal college obviously yeah yeah I'm, I'm I think it worked out um path that I chose but I think about all the time what how my life would be different if I if I went to acting school which makes me think at some point you're going to get offered some roles i mean with this That's taken the off goal. i mean i have been self-taping and stuff i want i've definitely acting is a big goal for me do you have a like what's a target type genre i mean dream would be a movie musical oh. i would love a movie musical can you imagine that that would be so fun but also just like any like i don't know like i love like indie films and like a24 and all that stuff it's gonna happen it's we'll see. Hundred percent. Fingers crossed. Happen. It's in the universe. <laughs> Your friends, you know, the crew that's been with you forever, family, mm-hmm. friends, all that. Uh, what's their reaction to this success you've had so far? And granted, you got you know, sky's the limit. A lot of things to do. Mm-hmm. But what's their reaction so far? I mean, they're they love it. They're very proud of me. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. right? Any any of them got famous because of this? But there's usually like a mom or an uncle or somebody <laughs> no. that gets you know a little, little bit of fame from it. No, no, no. like that. My, my mom would love to just stay out of the spotlight <laughs> forever. What about the same question to you? What's your reaction to what's going on? It's really cool. It's really cool to see people connecting to my music like this. I mean, that's why I write songs. I just, it's so cool to see the community that's been built around it, especially on TikTok. Um, It's really special. Quick recap. Ceilings is huge, Mm -hmm. obviously. Five Seconds Flat, the album is out. You know, you guys know this. Uh, New album, albums, plural, in the works. Uh, Tours, you got some festivals coming up. Uh, What else do people need to know? Lizzie McAlpine. Oh boy, I think you covered it all. Honestly. Everything. Right? <laughs> I, I need to know whenever so I'm, I'm putting it out there once again. The mm-hmm. the ghost story you had. Yeah. It, somebody in your crew. Somebody has to know. They have to know the hotel. I, I asked wanna, my mo- I asked my mom the other day, and I think she was like, I don't remember what it was called. If she know. comes up with it, please. I'm gonna I'm let gonna know. find. Yeah, I'll find it. All right, Lizzie. At the <laughs> end of every interview, fist bump to make it official. Bye, yeah. <laughs>